All right, guys, apologies, it's been a minute since my last video, but um, no point making any excuses, just simply been busy. Um, in today's video, I'm quite excited about, we're gonna be making the turbo manifold for the front engine on the VR6. So, what we have here is a, an array of bits and pieces to, to make up that manifold. So we have some weld L's, which are weldable elbows, and these are one and a half inch. We've got a T-piece, which is two and a half inch um, front and back, and on the side it's also one and a half inch. The flanges off the VR6 manifold, or downpipe, should I say, which have been cut off. A T3 flange and a tile 38 mil wastegate flange. Um, and clearly, obviously, a, a turbo. So, um, I've previously cut off the top and bottom of this and squeezed it down to an oval shape in the vise. I'll insert a clip. Um, just to show you guys that now. Now the reasoning for doing that is, well, the simple reason for cutting the top and bottom off, which are just these pieces here is I didn't need them, so it just needs to be shorter. And then the reason for ovaling it is because it will sit like that with the T3 flange on top. Obviously, I'll grind out the inner end edges of this to make it nice, a nice smooth transition and weld it from underneath. So, the will sit on here, the wastegate will sit there and it's a nice transition inside it's kind of a nice kind of um beveled if you want to call it that insert there so it, it should flow nicely out into the wastegate and then on the bottom i'll have to again oval the pipe slightly to fit and weld them in there but two of them will go into the bottom there and they'll eventually join onto these two, which will go onto the flanges, like so. That might not make a lot of sense, but it will make a, a lot more sense when I put it back on the engine. So I'll do that now and I'll show you. Right, okay, so as I've previously mentioned in other videos, I made this kind of brace just to kind of temporarily mount the turbo where I think it needs to be, and I'm happy with the position. I've made some alterations, now it's gonna be back kind of one notch and then over ever so slightly. So now this is where this T3 flange is gonna sit. This is that T piece underneath it, just attached with a cable tie. And then I've put the flanges on the um, manifold back on. So all that's kind of left in terms of the connections is you're gonna have one 90 degree bend there, then a small straight piece, another 90 degree bend here, and then a straight piece going up into there, and that's that bank done. Other bank's gonna be the exact same kind of straight piece coming out into that 90, another small straight section, and then back into another 90, going back into that T piece, and that's it. Okay, what I've done is I've used some scrap pipe just to kind of connect it all up, just so I can test what size I'm gonna need and what kind of angles I've got to use to, to, to join the two 90s up. That's looking relatively good, so it's connected there, and here is is where it needs to sit that T piece. So I kind of marked its orientation. Now I can start to oval it to kind of half the width of this T piece, and then I'll do the same on the other side. And then I can start to work out how much needs to be kind of cut and joined and and welded over to get it as square and flowing as nicely as possible. But yeah, that's that's looking alright. Okay, I've notched the two pipes, so now they sit in together. You can see that when they're together, it's slightly bowed. It's just not quite flat, it's just a little bit curved. So this needs to level across that, but then that sits nicely on there. There's a little bit of a gap, but I can plug all that. Um, and the flow's going that way through, so it's not like it's a restriction going the other way, so I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. So what I'm going to do now is tack all that together, level it off, tack all it back onto there, 
and we can start trying to assemble it and cutting the final bits and pieces, tack all those and make sure it's all square and then we're good to try it in the car. sits on there nice and flat. What I'm going to do now is just weld that T3 flange to the key piece and then mock it back up on the engine and work out where it is in what orientation. I'm sure it's square on there but it's about that. Okay, so this is currently where I am. I've welded the elbow onto the straight, straight onto the flange, and this TP section with these two elbows have already been tacked. So what I need to do is now make up the pipe to join these two together, and we're kind of done, and then that one as well. So as you can see, they're slight at angles to each other, so they're not quite straight on. So um, to work out what that angle is, all I've done, is use a bit of cardboard and just kind of worked out the angles using that give myself a little bit of leeway so I can grind it down if I'm not quite square to start with but that looks good enough so what I'll do is I'll just take this over to the um, saw and uh, use the angles on that to uh, cut the steel so I'll do that now okay so this side's a little bit easier because one side's 90 degrees, so to get the other angle, all I need to do is line that edge up with this line, like so. Adjust the clamp and bolt it down, which I've already done, and now it should cut that angle relative to 90 degrees. So, I just need to put the steel in, clamp it up, make sure the distance is right, like so, against the blade and we should be good to cut. Right, so I've profiled these bits now and they're fitting nicely, so I'm just going to tap all them in place. Right, all tapped up now. I'm just going to take it off here and put it back on the engine in the car and just double check that it all fits and then we'll go from there. Right, take two. Um, we're revisiting the exhaust manifold because the other one, well I'd like to say it didn't fit, but it did fit, but it was just too close to some of the other components. So it was really close to the bulkhead and it was really close to this second clutch mass cylinder. So in, in my opinion, um, it would have boiled the, the fluid. Um, so I had to move it over. So it, <laughs> thankfully I didn't boil up the manifold totally, it was just tacked on, so I've cut it apart and I've moved where this flange sits. It was there, and I've moved it across about three inches. So now it's 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 got a reasonable bit of distance between the edge of this manifold and where the um, um, mast cylinder sat. Also, I've kind of tilted it slightly, so it sits away from the bulkhead. So that gives me some more clearance. Now, I've, sure I've, sl I've slightly dropped it a little bit down as well, just to uh, give me some headroom, because it was quite close to the bonnet. So it's definitely in a better position. So what I'm gonna do to do now is just finish up these pieces just to extend the bits that need extending and then I'll tie all it together and then try and fit it again and hopefully everything will be clear. Okay I've got those bits tacked in so now I just need to make up these um, joining sections. I was browsing um, YouTube the other night and I saw quite a good way of, of doing it which is basically you wrap um, this whole section in tape and then you just simply cut the notches out and then wind them around a piece of tube and that's your template. So I've got both sides here. Okay, so I've cut out those two pieces now. Turned out quite well. So literally fits in there quite snug. That's that piece. 
and that piece. So that method quite works quite well. Work better than the kind of just putting kind of card behind it and trying to draw the curves. So yeah, happy with that. So I'm just gonna tap all that together, then we can get it off and put it in the car. Okay, it's on now. It's a bit further away from the bulkhead now. It's still quite close, but it's not as close as it was before, so I'm happy with that. Um, the main bit is it's now a reasonable distance away from this master cylinder, so I've got, I've got some space. I'll put some heat shielding around this, and I'll run the clutch and brake lines lower down, so they're nowhere near this, or not as close to this. Um, but yeah, happy with that. Right, let's put the table on. Okay, the turbo's now fitted. As you can see, there's still a fair bit of room on the top and at the back. Um, the one alteration I have done is to rotate the compressor housing around. So originally the plan was to have the compressor outlet down here and kind of come out, spin round, and then come under. But I'm now gonna have it come out of here 90 degrees and come along here. The reason why I didn't want to do that before is because there's a breather which sits out here and that would block it. So what I've done now, ignore all that. But I'll just cut that breather off. Um, so what I'll do is on a decent rocker cover that's not ruined like this one, I'll just blank that output, which is here. So I'll just cut it short, blank it, and then drill and tap this side to have the breather coming out this side. Um, that just makes the routing of the compressor housing way simpler than trying to go kind of down around myself and stuff. So that's it. So um, the next video is going to be doing all the pipe work for the intake and outlet, etc., etc. But we'll get to that. Right, that's it for this one. I will catch up in the next one. Cheers, bye.